So, I mean, you done it, you got through them all, you passed them all. So what do you think? So what do you think about what you did and, and what would you tell people who are, are watching and listening um, about what you did and your approach? Um, I, I think I, I would certainly understand anyone who was uh, trepidatious to take on the seven exams at once thing, but I, I would certainly say uh, at the very least getting started that even just walking out of that first exam was such a relief. Just knowing um, even simple things like what it felt like to walk into the test center and you know hand over your ID and and get um, you know wanded with the metal detector and get your pockets turned out and all just getting used to that the the actual physical going into the test center and sitting down yeah. what that space is like what the room is like um, <clears throat> but knowing kind of how that test feels in real life even though I was testing with NCARB's practice vignette software and the the uh, AEP practice exams it's not really the real thing so getting through that first test is such a mental kind of switch. Um, it, it makes it so much less unknown and scary and distant. Um, so I would definitely say at least take the first exam. Um, other observations, I, I would say, and I've, I've told people at NCARB this too, um, there have definitely been some things that I think were lost in the shift away from it always being all at once. Um, <clears throat> in my experience, from what I've heard, um, back when it was only offered in June and it was four straight days, um, there was, you know, everybody was studying together. If you were in an office, you knew all of the interns leading up to June yeah. were all going to be studying. You know, the, the workload on the interns would drop significantly leading up to that because it was all studying together. Um, it can now be a very lonely road. Uh, if you're not proactive about seeking out a group to study with, if that's something that's important to you, yeah. uh, it, it, it can be pretty, pretty isolating. Um, <clears throat> for me, again, because I was studying very fast and and um, you know knew the constraints I was under. I, I didn't mind kind of just hunkering down and being kind of solitary about it. But yeah. that can be a significant factor in how you're how you're actually studying and the mentality going into it. Huh. That's interesting. Um, huh. Yeah. That actually makes me think maybe we could uh, we could work to um, to develop some sort of study group mechanism or something yeah. um, with mm -hmm. what we're doing here at Black Spectacles. And there are a lot of resources. I mean, AI components are great about. Um, yeah. Study groups. A lot of bigger firms have kind of committees or, or, or groups for the uh, you know young professionals to kind of get yeah. together and work on that stuff. Yeah. But it's still not you know it's you're probably not testing all at the same time, so it's not quite the same. Yeah. You know. Yeah, no, that's interesting. I wonder if there's some way uh, that we could collaborate <laughs> with the components to uh, to develop some sort of a rhythm, um, almost in the entire profession where everyone's sort of studying for similar exams. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's interesting. Okay, cool. Well, thank you so much for uh, telling me or telling us uh, really sort of your story and I think it's super inspiring and I love the approach personally um, because you just really kind of get this kind of mean, you know, kind of pain in the butt kind of out of the way and now you can look forward um, and you've kind of gotten past it, which I think is so, uh, so awesome. So congrats to you and, uh, and, and good, good work. Um, uh, uh, and so let's talk a little bit about the past scholarship. I believe the Indiegogo campaign that you had started um, has ended, and so can you talk a little bit about where that scholarship is right now, and for folks mm -hmm. who still want to maybe, um, you know, contribute to that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so the Indiegogo campaign was really just the, the kind of launch of that. Um, those are limited to sixty days, and I, I wanted that to really open the same time that I started the the seven week study period. Um, <clears throat> so it actually closed uh, just a couple days after I took my last exam. Um, so in the meanwhile, we've we've built a, a permanent dedicated page on our website, same address ais.org/pass. Um, but now those, uh, it basically just doesn't go through Indiegogo anymore. It's pretty much the same information and the same video, um, and it's actually better for us because Indiegogo is not collecting fees on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then oh, tell me about your plans for actually uh, for for launching this thing and what the time frame is. Yeah, so this fall um, we will launch uh, a page on the website for uh, recent graduates of the AIS to submit applications. Uh, there will be a <clears throat> probably a brief essay or something just because we graduate about a thousand students a year. We're not sure how much response there'll be, how much interest there'll be. So we need to have some sort of objective or subjective criteria to, to uh, select 
uh, the scholar is based on. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, beginning in the fall, um, the way it'll work is uh, uh, applications will have to include a, a, a record of having passed an exam. Um, so it's kind of it's a reimbursement. Okay. Uh, but if you are, you know, if you submit that pass as part of your um, application and, and have uh, kind of submitted the the other information and the the little narrative, yep. uh, you basically get reimbursed by check from the IAS. Uh, the hope is for this to be an ongoing thing to continue accepting both donations and applications and, and just again because it's rolling people test all year round yeah. um, that we can just continue to to move this forward um, like I said the the financial aspect is in many ways the the most uh, justifiable excuse not to test so sure the hope of, of kind of the the informational side of this campaign was to to offset these sort of intellectual yeah, barrier. um, barriers, but yeah. the, the scholarship itself is, is intended to, to offset the financial ones. Okay, and so if folks want to, uh, if they want to apply for this scholarship, um, what's the website that they'll go to to, uh, to apply? Um, <clears throat> that'll eventually be at the same AIS.org slash pass. It's, we're actually in the process of redeveloping our website. Um, yeah. That'll launch in July. Okay. So I imagine at that point, so either late July, or early August, um, that same page will have options for both uh, donations and applications. Okay, so we'll put that link uh, in our show notes so that folks can um, can uh, can pay attention to that. And uh, is there a, is there a newsletter? Or is there an email uh, list they may want to get on um, so that they could kind of be advised when that thing gets gets launched? Yeah, absolutely. There's um, <clears throat> our newsletter goes out uh, goes out to all our members, but you can ask to be added to that list. Okay, um, you can do that just by. Uh, submitting a, an email to crit, C R I T at AIS.org. Okay, awesome. And then, of course, you can follow uh, AIS.org on Twitter. Uh, I'm sure you guys will be posting everything that's, oh, yeah. that's coming through there. So, okay, great. Well, um, first of all, like I said, congratulations <laughs> on, uh, on passing all seven. Um, I look forward to it. Was it you're two and a half years away now from, uh, mm -hmm. from actually being a, an official licensed architect, pretty much? Counting down. Yeah. All right, good. Well, I'm sure you're probably going to like work 90 hours a week, so that will probably <laughs> just be an hour, or I'm sorry, uh, you know, one and a half years uh, mm -hmm. for you to get uh, officially licensed. Have it. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I look forward to it, and uh, and congrats also for uh, the development of the past scholarship. Um, I think it's a really exciting thing, and as you say, it's a great way to kind of uh, make uh, the the financial side of taking the exam uh, not an excuse any longer. So. Uh, so thank you very much, Charlie. Thanks to everyone who's tuned in. And um, if you'd like to attend our next ARE Live broadcast, visit yep. blackspectacles.com slash podcast to register to attend. ARE Live is uh, is now a podcast, and a um, uh, which you can subscribe to on iTunes and Stitcher. It's also a, uh, a YouTube uh, 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 show, I guess you could say, that we're, that we're running as well. So you can consume it however you want. Um, and if you want to learn more about the AIA ARE prep curriculum that Charlie talked about, go to blackspectacles.com. Um, and and we'll, like I mentioned, we'll, we'll put a link to that in the show notes. And for those of you who want to get busy preparing for the ARE, if you're already an AIA member, um, you can visit aia.org slash ARE prep to get a 15% discount for the entire duration of your AIA ARE prep membership. And finally, uh, please leave a comment below the video to let us know what you think and share any suggestions you may have. I promise we'll read every word that you write and use them to tune our next episodes. So thanks for watching.